this war has entered the third and most likely its final stage. The major battle in the south, the battle for Kherson, is set to happen any day now. And in the meantime, Russians are planning to open the brand new front line in the north, but let's be honest, it's not going to help them. Because it is time to prepare for Ukrainian victory. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and quickly see some most recent footage. And our first video comes to us allegedly from the east of Ukraine, where we can see a Ukrainian soldier creating an art piece on the walls of his trench. Then we move down to Shakhtyorsk, where we can see the consequences of yesterday's fire. And as you can see, this also damaged the rail tracks, which allows me to make the assumption that probably this was the work of Ukrainian partisans. And since this happened on the intersection of other major railways, this potentially disrupts the logistics of Russians to other cities such as Donetsk, Lugansk and even Lysychansk, at least temporarily. But then, later this morning, there was another fire which was spotted in the same city. Our next picture shows us the most recent development of the Ukrainian army, its brand new drone called Shark. This is a reconnaissance drone and one of its main responsibilities is to reveal enemies' targets to make more precise attacks for high Mars. Alright, and now let's see two last impressive videos from the south. And while I'm going there, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. I will also have a charitable live stream this Sunday, October 30th at 7 pm Eastern Standard Time. And if you want to ask me some questions before the live stream, feel free to do it in my Instagram. Ok, so the first video comes to us from Antonovsky Bridge, which is located in Kherson region. And as you can see, Russians were caught in the middle of shelling while trying to cross Dnipro river using pontoons. And finally, here is video also from Kherson region, which shows us Ukrainians who destroy Russian tanks using Excalibur missiles. I also recently received this short documentary from Ukrainian special forces Gonor, who are liberating Kupyansk. And this is probably one of my favorite videos which I discovered recently, because it has the combination of bodycam footage, drone footage and all the dialogues are translated. And if you want to see the full version, in addition to all the extra footage from today's episode, please consider checking my Patreon. The proceeds will be donated to Ukraine and you can find all the useful links down below. Alright, and before we talk about some very important news from the south, let me quickly update you on Ukraine's counteroffensive in the east. First of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainians continued its counteroffensive operations to the west of Svatovia. And while this map does not fully reflect these changes yet, the city will be eventually liberated since Ukrainians are approaching both from the north and from the south. In addition to that, the same report claims that the entire Russian forces in the east are in very poor condition and low morale. And as a result of this, as soon as there is first signs of trouble, regular Russian soldiers will be withdrawing from their positions with little to no resistance. This is especially emphasized by the most recent statement by Ramzan Kadyrov, who was criticizing Russians for complaining about not having weapons. He was like, hey Don, you know Don, instead of complaining Don and crying that, well, you don't have weapons, so what, just go and capture Don these weapons from Ukraine. Ukrainians, Don. It's not like Russia is gonna help you, Don, right, Don? Which is like the last thing you want to hear as a Russian soldier being in Ukraine. But okay, the same report then provides us with this map, which shows us the most recent and significant fighting in the last 24 hours. And as you can see, the most intense combat is happening right now around Bakhmut area, and then we have several fightings happening next to Avdivka, Marinka, and this new one to the east of Vukhlidar. And the goals for both sides pretty much remain the same. For Ukrainians it is to disrupt the logistics to Lysychansk and Severodonetsk and to advance from Bakhmut to the south of both of these cities. And the goal of Russians is to… hmm… 
Alright, and now as promised, let's talk about the most recent developments in the South. First of all, according to Zelensky, Russians are not prepared to leave Kherson. All this was just an informational operation. He also added that Russians are aware that at this very moment there is no more opportunities to retreat from this encirclement in Kherson. They waited for too long and now they will be forced to fight until the end. And the only two possible outcomes comes for them right now is to either be eliminated or be taken as a prisoner of war. Those who wanted to retreat, or I should say were allowed to retreat, they already did it, leaving just regular Russian soldiers inside the city and ordering them to fight until the end. And I mean, I can only imagine the morale of these people. Which basically means, as soon as this final battle for Kherson begins, the majority of them will prefer to save their lives and be taken as prisoners. Especially when we have statements like this from Russian infiltrators, such as Kirill Strimausov, who is saying that people can return to Kherson as soon as the front line is defended. And then apparently the very next day, he and other friends of Russia are far from this above mentioned front line. So it's like, yeah, no worries, Russians will protect us, uh, no need to panic, but you know, just in case we'll just go somewhere far, but we will be back, so you don't worry, we will be back. And then, in addition to low morale Russian soldiers, Kherson infiltrators also forced volunteers to join this territorial defense. They gave these poor Ukrainians the weapons and basically said, you need to protect us or you will be at risk of being liberated. And I'm not gonna lie here, I don't think this will end well. And then right here, we have this map from the Institute for the Study of War, which also shows us the most significant fighting in the last 24 hours. And as you can see, these are pretty much the same locations, which are next to Dutchani, Davidov Brit, Snehurivka and Posad Pokrovske. And before we talk about the brand new front line, which Russians are planning to open in the north, here is your extremely quick summary from the south. So, like mentioned previously, Ukrainians are pretty much advanced across the entire front line in Kherson. Slowly but surely, they are gaining the momentum. At the same time, those Russians important enough who are allowed to retreat, they already did it, mainly through Novokakhovka and Kherson. And those Russians remaining in Kherson region have basically no opportunities to retreat, because all the major bridges are in the range of Ukrainian high Mars. The morale of Russian soldiers is extremely low and those Ukrainians who were forced into this territorial defense will most likely sabotage from the inside. And the only logical outcome here is that sooner or later Kherson will be liberated. But let's not forget about these difficult decisions that Russians will be forced to make. In one of my previous videos I was making the assumption that this difficult decision can be simply to retreat. But according to Alexei Khromov, Russians while retreating can also destroy and burn everything to the ground. So it's like if we cannot have Kherson, no one will. I honestly hope this will not happen, because first of all, Russians simply have nowhere to escape. And the most probable and the best case scenario is that Ukrainians will capture those Russians along with their military vehicles and equipment. Ok, and now let's briefly talk about this brand new front line that Russians are planning to open in the north. If you remember, not that long time ago, there were several reports about Russians increasing their presence in Belarus, close to the border with Ukraine. And the two biggest locations for Russians were close to these airports next to Mazir and Homil, which allows me to assume that they will try to approach Kyiv both from the west and from the east. And later, this assumption was confirmed by the general staff of Ukrainian forces, who basically said exactly the same. According to them, Russia cannot achieve any significant progress, neither in the east nor in the south, that is why they will try to approach from the north and eliminate the Ukrainian leadership. And I guess it is pretty safe to say 
that it is not going to happen. If Russians couldn't even take Kyiv in three days, using this element of surprise, they stand no chances right now. The Ukrainians are well aware, prepared, and the soldiers have much more experience. But nevertheless, Ukrainians did increase the number of its forces in these areas. And by the way, you can access all the maps that I was drawing today for free in our Discord. The link will be down below. Alright, here is your final summary of the day and probably of the entire month. According to the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Alexei Reznikov, the war has entered the third and most likely its final phase. The first phase was to prevent Russians from advancing and the second one was to stabilize the front lines. And according to him, the third phase is the counteroffensive of Ukraine and subsequent liberation of the territories. And I mean, yeah, right now pretty much nothing is happening, but is it a bad thing? Absolutely no. Just keep in mind, for how long the Kharkov region was inactive, just so it will be liberated almost completely in approximately two weeks. It is my honest assumption that the next similar big and rapid liberation will happen to the east of Dnipro river to this part of Kherson region. And after this, we might see even more success by Ukrainians next to Lysychansk, Severodonetsk and Bakhmut. Because after all, it is time to prepare for a Ukrainian victory. If you want to show some support for my work, please consider becoming my channel member. You can see all the other useful links to my right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi. Don't forget about the charitable live stream this Sunday and see you tomorrow.